So almost ready to get underway and starting this one Jake Junis Chris what are you looking for from him. Well he's allowing just over one base runner per inning which is really good especially for a starter because these hitters get to see you two three maybe even four times in a start so just shows you how deceptive and how effective his stuff is. We'll see if it's that way in this one. This is Bryce Terang. The wind of the pitch. Bounce to the right. And that one handled. Fires to first on the run. And he beats the throw very close right there. That's why you run hard 90 feet. Take nothing for granted, especially when you've got great speed. I'll take the infield knock. Jackson Chorio up now for the Brewers. Ball. That one missed. <laughs> Move to first. Terrain back in standing. Base runner with a one way lead right there. All he's trying to do is get a look at the pitcher's move. Had no intent of stealing on that pitch. Rolled to short. Possible two ball. Off balance feed. Oh. There's one. On to Smith. Two. Nice soft hands on the backhand right there in the six hole. Starts the double play. It's not an easy throw, but he puts it on the money. Really good job to get that double play started. And now it's William Contreras. So a foul ball makes it one and two. Two down, nobody on. Ball. Two, two. Spoils that one and it remains two and two. Two outs. Short hop liner handled it short. Over to Smith. Out. Third out. No score as we head to the bottom of the first. Back here with my pal Siggy. And on the hill in this one, Aaron Savali. And Chris, pitching on the road has not been particularly kind to him. Yeah, and you don't want to be too quick to say that he can't pitch on the road. Sometimes, you know, it's just a matter of luck. It's not having a feel. Difference between the bullpen mound to the mound out there on the playing field. Don't know what it is, but I know this. He's got good enough stuff to overcome and get it done on the road as well as at home. So we'll see what he's able to do in this one. Swing and a miss as he was out front. Ball that's two. off the mark. Yeah, that's ball two. Two ball, two strike. The pitch. Foul ball, another 2-2 two -two upcoming. The wind of the pitch. That to right. One away. Here's the lineup for the Reds. This is an offense, Chris, that's having a hard time scoring runs right now. Yeah, sometimes things just aren't going to click, and unfortunately what happens is guys press, they try to do a little bit more, and they get out of their game. You've got to let the game come to you. If you chase it, it's going to run from you. So this is a team that just needs to calm down, relax, and understand that they're going to come out of this. So now one and two. One out, base is empty. Not two, two. close with that one. Two and two. Ball. 
wouldn't chase that time. Up the middle, and he knocks it down. And they get the out after the ricochet. Tough play on the barehanded second, but he made it look smooth. Love that. Two outs, base is empty. Here's the Reds catcher, Tyler Stevenson. 1-1 one, one now. And there's the strike. Two out spaces empty. And a foul ball. He stays alive. Got him. And good work there as he gets a 1-2-3. Nobody left for Cincinnati. Scoreless after one. Second inning set to go. And it's Reese Hoskins up to the dish. He is very much your typical power hitter. I'd say he falls into the three true outcomes category. Well, we've seen more and more of that lately. The ability to drive the ball to slog is getting heavily favored over any discipline or strikeout concerns. The pitch. Swings through it for the K. Slider got him for strike three. Well, one of the things that hitters will do is they'll look for that red dot on the baseball as it's coming in to let them know what the pitch is. And if they see the red dot, it's typically a slider. But when a guy's got a really tight one with high spin rates, very difficult to determine. And that's probably why we saw a swing and miss right there. Just a nasty pitch. Willie Adamas stands in. On the run, throw to first. Two up, two down in the top of the second. Up now for Milwaukee, Garrett Mitchell. Second inning here, no score. And another ball. Swings and misses. And that is strike two. Line drive, and that should be extra bases. Makes the turn and heads for second. He's there. It's a two-out double. Well, they call that an advantage count for a reason. You're so much more likely to get something you can handle. As a hitter, there's not a whole lot better of a feeling than a double into the gap. Right off the bat, you know you put a great swing on the baseball. Runner in scoring position now and a good opportunity to push across the first run of the ball game. Gary Sanchez at the plate. Man on second, two down. Swing and a miss. One and two. Well, they're looking to get on the board first here after that clutch two-out double made this inning interesting. Out to short, De La Cruz. Zips it to first, and that is the inning. Brewer strand one. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. Bottom of the inning. So now here's the Reds cleanup hitter. T.J. Friedel. T.J. Friedel. Here's a 1-1. And another ball. That pitch clips the outside corner. And now two and two. Making the calls behind the plate in this one is Woody Keller. Yeah, and Woody does a pretty good job back there, Boog. He's got a pretty fair strike zone most of the time. Maybe some inconsistency here or there, but usually he's back there doing a solid job. Cuts and misses. It's a strikeout. Well, that was the cutter down and in right there. And typically, if you're going to have a chance with the pitch, if it's down, that's your best chance of doing anything with it. It's kind of like a mini slider, just with a little less vertical movement. But still, that one tied him up, and he couldn't get the barrel to it.
Now the left fielder, Spencer Steer. Next oh. offering is downstairs. And a good eye there. And he Both walked him. Take your base. Pretty easy walk right there. Last pitch wasn't even that much to think good. about. The designated hitter. Ty France, the next to hit for the Reds. Swing and a miss. One, two. To third might be two. Over to Terang. One. And that's two. So they go quietly there. We head on now to the top of the third. No score. And welcome back to the ballpark. All set for the start of the inning. Here is the rookie third baseman, Joseph Ortiz. Sinker catches the zone at the knees. Swings and misses, struck him out. And now here's a speed threat. Outfielder, Blake Perkins. Perfect. And now two balls and a strike. Oh. And there's a ball. 3-1. And it's ball four. He missed down low. Well, he tried to nibble right there and just missed his spot. Hitter didn't offer at it. Now he has somebody to worry about over at first. Back to the top of the Milwaukee order. Bryce Terang digs in now. Swing and a fly ball in the air out towards right center field. Benson pulls it down and he makes the catch. And there's two away. Here's the left fielder, Jackson Chorio. We talk about guys with good speed, and definitely he has it. But pushing the offense aside for just a second, Chris, it's the defensive side that I think the speed factors in the most. And the pitch. Swing and a line drive, slicing into right field. Makes the grab, and that's the inning. Milwaukee leaves one, and we're still knotted at zero. As we go to the last of the third, now Dominic Smith. The 1 1. That one pulled foul. The line of the pitch. That two missed two. by a lot. Two and two. Okay. Yeah, that's outside. Packs and misses. It's a strikeout. That is it. So digging in, Santiago Espinal. The line to kick the pitch. That one the other way, Terang. And two straight set down to begin the bottom of the third. Batting none. The right field. 
Will Benson, the next to hit for the Reds. Still tied at zero, last of the third. Good eye right there. It's a good take. Sharp grounder, that's through for a base hit. So a two-out knock keeps the inning alive. Well, patience and discipline paid off right there as he got into an advantage count. Pretty tough for the infielders to do anything with that one. He pulled it hard into the outfield, and even when you keep it on the ground, it feels great when you hit a missile like that. And now they've got some speed on first, so we'll see if they try to get him into motion. Jonathan Indy at the plate. Fouls one off. Two and two. He might want to steal second in this spot, but he's dealing with a catcher that has one of the best pop times in the game. He needs to pick his spot very wisely. On the ground, right side. Fires over to Hoskins, and that'll do it. So one left for Cincinnati, and we are still scoreless. And now the DH, William Contreras. Well, I got a chance to meet William during spring training as he was coming up trying to get to the big leagues. And this kid's got some ridiculous pop. Watched him on the backfields taking batting practice. All of his coaches. And that should be extra bases. Around first and hustling for second. And he's got a leadoff double in the fourth. Well, that was one of those high percentage advantage counts where batting averages are just so much higher. Pretty much just a textbook double into the gap. And when you can drop one in there between the outfielders, you know you're making the turn at first. Just an excellent swing. Go ahead, run on base. Here's a big power threat. Reese Hoskins. Ball to strike. Bounced up the middle, India. That's the first out in the top of the fourth. Not a bad outcome in that spot. The runner moves up to third, and now they have a chance to drive in the go-ahead run. It's not a knock, but at the end of the day, it's a good at bat. Here's the shortstop at the play, Willie Adamas. You have to find a way to score the runner from third, especially with less than two outs. Wait for the pitch you want and hit it as hard as you can. Out to short, De La Cruz. The throw to first, and the first run of the game comes across. And stepping in is the speedy Garrett Mitchell. One run across in the frame so far, top half of inning number four. And one and two. Two down, nobody on. Line drive, and it goes just foul. The pitch. Swings through that, and it's a strikeout. Out number three. So it's one run, one hit, no errors, and no one left. We're midway in the fourth. It's the Brewers one, and the Reds nothing. Ready to go, bottom four. Stepping in is the switch in at shortstop, Ellie De La Cruz. You can feel the extra attention on Ellie anytime he comes to the plate. This guy's a player that keeps you on the edge of your seat because you don't know what. He oh, and that deflects off his glove. And he beats it, he's safe. Tyler Stevenson, the next to hit.
Ground ball left side could be two. Over to Terang. One on to Hoskins. Double play. As a former player, watching 5-4-3 double plays brings back some adrenaline. It's such an exciting play, and it's always a great reminder of baseball being such a team sport. T.J. Friedel, the next to hit for the Reds. Two outs. Dives, and he can't hang on. Now he gets it to the pitcher covering the bag. He keeps his composure, and they get the out. Back here in Cincinnati, we go to the top of the fifth, and now Gary Sanchez. And a base hit right there. Man aboard on the leadoff single. Everything came together for him. Nice line drive to the pull side, met it out front, but just stayed through it nice enough and ripped it into the outfield. Next to hit, Joseph Ortiz. On the ground, two ball. De La Cruz tossed to second, back to first, and that is a double play. Well, he made his pitch down in the zone. He got that ball on the ground. The double play he was looking for, really good execution. Perfect. Next for the Brewers, Blake Perkins. And he hits a ground ball right side. The throw to first, That's an and that will end the inning. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. Now at the plate, Spencer Steer. Strike two. He's pitching well, but not throwing a ton of first pitch strikes. He usually doesn't work out for success, but you can never predict baseball. That Good one two. way outside. Two balls, two strikes. Got him looking. And that's the first out. Ty France, the next to hit for the Reds. One down, base is empty. That one fouled off, two and two. And a pitch. Got him swinging. Two down. That's that classic wipeout slider below the zone right there. Just nasty. Looks like a fastball thigh high that you got to protect the zone, and then it's just that late break that fools you and kind of makes you look silly. Dom Smith stands in. Two down, nobody on. That's to third. Fires over to Hoskins, and it's a 1-2-3 inning. Reds go down quietly, and it remains 1-0. All set for the top of the six. Here's the leadoff man for the Brewers, Bryce Terang. In the air to left center. Steer makes the play, and there's one down. Up next to the ball. Jackson Chorio, up now for the Brewers. 
Singy, you got to appreciate a guy who's this good defensively. I mean, watching him track balls in the outfield, it is beautiful. And I would say that most great defensive outfielders, it's kind of natural. There is some work that you can do to it uh, to improve your game. But ultimately, you either have it or you don't. Smoked into left, base hit. So a man aboard now with one away. Everything came together perfectly for him right there. Just a solid swing right there. Caught it out front and ripped it into the outfield for the base hit. Those always feel great. Now the Reds manager is out of the dugout and will make a move to the pen. Jacob Junis won't go any further tonight. And as he heads off, we'll step aside for a minute. Back with the new pitcher after this break. New pitcher now, Nick Martinez. Pretty tight game, so they're looking for quality pitches out of him right here. Got to do his best to keep the score right where it is. William Contreras up now for the Brewers. His July and August splits there. And the pitch. There's one guy that I can think about, Bird, who started as a third baseman, Alex Gordon, and then became an elite perennial gold glover out in left field for the Kansas City Royals. But he's a guy, when you watch him play, you would imagine that that's all he ever played in his life was the outfield. Really nice execution of the cut fastball right there. Similar to how you might throw a two-strike slider, start it middle away, let it break, and take over that outside corner of the plate. But sometimes with a cutter, you just don't know how much it'll move. I think he's good, but I think he was also a little lucky right there. Martinez, Thanks. keeping an eye on him. Yeah, some guys just have instincts, right? I mean, that's the way it goes. We talk about Larry Walker, the Hall of Famer, and his instinct on the bait. Rudder takes off. Fouls one off. Two and two. And as well, lots of pop in that bet. So you combine the slug with really good defense. Two outs. And there's a rocket into the outfield. Throw in holds the lead runner at second. Two on now with two away. He was all over that one. I could watch base hits like that one all day long, and so could every hitting coach in the league. Just a nice line drive into center field. Willie Adamas up now for the Brewers. And another ball. First and second, two down. And we're in the top half of the sixth. Center field. And they get Adamas for the out. And that's the third out. Nice work from the Cincinnati pen there. 8-9-1 scheduled in the bottom of the sixth. It's the Brewers one and the Reds nothing. And we're back. John Chambi with Chris Singleton in the booth and leading off the bottom of the sixth, Santiago Espinal. And a 1-1. In the air, center field. Perkins makes a nice running catch. Now batting, White Will Benson. Will Benson, the next to hit for the Reds. He's someone that you might not describe as having elite level speed, but he can absolutely move, and it is a factor in his game. One down, base is empty. Foul ball there. Boy, this guy's definitely a plus runner, but what I love about him is that he goes all out every single time, never oh. takes a break. It's guys like that, even though they don't have the elite speed, the fact that they're consistent with it, they make moves on the base paths. Still two and two after the foul ball. Oh. 
struck him out looking. Really love the pitch sequence right there. I'm telling you what, pitcher and catcher on the same page right now. So back to the top of the Reds lineup. Here's the second baseman, Jonathan India. The Reds down by a run here in the bottom of the sixth. Out to center, gliding in towards the infield. He's got it, and that is that. New inning getting started. Leading off, Garrett Mitchell. Garrett Mitchell. The pitch. Late swing, foul to the left. The pitch. Struck him out swinging. Pulled the string of the changeup. Oh, there's a small sigh of relief right there. I mean, just to keep that speed off the base pass, it's not just the pitcher. It's other guys that have to think about it from your infielders, have to think about that runner potentially stealing, but also be in position to make a play. As an outfielder, you're thinking about a base hit to the outfield. I got to get to it quickly to try to keep this guy from taking an extra base. So I think everyone just a little more relaxed that he didn't reach base. Into the outfield, base hit. So they get a man aboard with a one-out single. Up next from Milwaukee, the third base. Joseph Ortiz will hit next. The two-one. That one fouled off. Two and two. This one popped up, drifts towards it, and makes the grab. That's out number two. The number 16. Blake. Next for Milwaukee, Perkins. Blake Perkins. Well, both sides equally as strong. So not a good time to try to turn him around with a relief pitcher and put him on the other side of the plate. Friedel moving under it. Nabs it. And that'll do it. Brewer strand one. They lead it one nothing. Back here at Great American Ballpark, and the batter will be the shortstop, Ellie De La Cruz. Looking to get the tying run on base. And fouled off. Trying to keep good speed off the bases. Foul ball still a one and two count. And a pitch. This to third or tees. And one away in the bottom of the seventh. Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air. He lets the defense work behind him with another ground ball. Good execution. Tyler Stevenson, the next to hit for the Reds. Trying to hold a one run lead here at the bottom of the seventh. That one finds the zone, and it's one and two. It really looks like these hitters have been in between with their timing today. Good fastball, excellent slider, but they've not been able to commit to one velocity and stay there. Next okay. offering misses, and it's three and two. the ground of first off balance Out. throw in time and that down quickly down. two away well there's a lot riding on that at bat right there a nice job of the pitcher to bear down make the pitch get the ground ball excellent piece of work T.J. Friedel the next to hit for the Reds and a 2-1 on the way Activity in the bullpen for the Brewers. Joe Ross, the veteran right-hander, appears to be loosening up. Kanu warming up as well. Ball and three. another ball. Full count.
Two down, nobody on. Swing, a high fly ball, pretty well struck, right field. Pulls it in on the warning track. Another scoreless inning, and now that's seven shutout frames. It's the Brewers one, and the Reds nothing. So a new arm out of the bullpen for the Reds, Tony Santiago. And we all know about his slider. It's just filthy, man. And one of the better ones in the game, I'd say. Spin rate's very high, and it just breaks a ton. So the batting order turns over. Up now for Milwaukee, Bryce Terang. Right-hander kicks deals. It's a good speed at the top of the order here. You want to get it on, see if you can get a stolen base, maybe get around the bases and pick up a run. Kicks and fires. Pulls the string with the changeup, struck him out. Well, that's always the key to effective pitching is getting ahead in the count. And as a pitcher, it really allows you to start expanding the zone. Hitters become defensive, and all of a sudden, that plate starts to get really wide. And what happens is, because of the pressure, you end up committing to a pitch as a batter before you recognize what it is, and that's what leads to the strikeout. At the play, Jackson Chorio. The 1-1 is come on and missed to the pitch upstairs. Base is empty one away, and we're in the top of the eighth. Got him swinging. Chance to strike out the side now. You talk about the benefits, the advantages of relievers who can come in and get the swing and miss, whether it's inherited runners or maybe a little jam that they get into themselves. Knowing that they can miss the bat, tell you what, that's huge and can change the ball game. Two outs. Swing and a miss. Two and two now. Activity in the bullpen for the Reds. Sam Moore loosening up for manager David Bell. Farmer, the right-hander, also getting loose. Two down, nobody on. Okay. Spoils a two-strike pitch, and he'll see another. Hard hit, left side. Over to Smith, and Milwaukee is set down in order. Brewers go down quietly, but they lead it one to nothing. Now, new pitcher on the mound as we roll into the bottom of the eighth, Joe Ross. Now, these are the spots where relievers really make a name for themselves, late and close. There's not much margin for error, but at the same time, there's a reason they're put in these situations. Now the left fielder, Spencer Steer. Righty delivers. And now the count, one and two after the swing and the miss. I guess you throw it that hard, you can get away with locations like that right down the middle. But I still think it's a dangerous pitch. Don't want to do it again. The wide, the kick, and the one-two. Gets a piece there, we'll do it again. The one-two. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. Pretty big strikeout right there to start this eighth inning. Down one. Any leadoff base runner really makes this inning a bit more interesting. 
But now this offense has to switch from possibly trying to manufacture a run to needing to run into something or just try to string multiple hits together to get a run across the plate. Now it's the Reds' DH, Ty France. Right-handed reliever. No, just missed. Holding on to a one-run lead here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. And strike two. And another ball. That's a really good take. Dominic Smith waiting for a turn at the plate. One down, base is empty. Strike three, got him swinging. Two out. Well, this is exactly what you're looking for from your bullpen arm when you roll him out there to start a new inning, hold on to a small lead. Just such a stabilizing effect. And I only get the first two hitters, but to strike them out, that gives everyone on defense a big boost of confidence. Cincinnati making a move for a pinch hitter. Ahmed Rosario. And he would be the tie and run boot, so we may see him try to launch one if he gets a good pitch to handle. Swings and misses. And a nice inning of work there as he sets him down. One, two, three. Nobody left for Cincinnati. They still trail one nothing. So coming into the game now on defense, Luke Maley. He takes over as the new first baseman. Well, one run game. Now the batter now, Reese Hoskins. Next pitch is downstairs. At the belt and fires. No. And that one a little Three below ball. the knees. Three and one. Strikeout for the first out here in the ninth. Not the best location with the fastball on strike three, but when you're pumping high 90s, you'll get away with some of those more margin for error. You know, the fastball has become such a huge strikeout pitch in the sport. And I think a lot of it has to do with all the attention and emphasis on improved spin rates. These fastballs are just exploding out of the pitcher's hands and jumping through the zone. And that one hammered. Steer ranging back. Pulls it in on the warning track. <laughs> Garrett Mitchell up now for the Brewers. Not looking like they'll be adding any insurance runs heading to the bottom of the ninth, so it's going to be on the bullpen to hold this lead. Oh. Next offer in there for a strike. It's a ball in two strikes. That one missing inside. Crowd locked in right now. One run game here in the ninth. On the ground. Tosses to first. And the inning is over. Nothing doing here this half. 8 9 1 2 up in the bottom of inning number nine. It's the Brewers one and the Reds nothing. We're back, and on the mound is the closer, Devin Williams. And he's got a big-time breaking ball to contend with, but hitters are going to have to pick it up early if they're going to have any chance. Here's the third baseman, Santiago Espinal. Well, these fans definitely want to get involved in the game. All it's going to take is to get the leadoff man or even a base runner on. 
And he grounds one to the right side. Terang throws the first in time. And they get the leadoff man in the ninth. Those plays can be tricky. They're routine, but that doesn't mean it's always going to be smooth. He delivered a good play right there. Now it's the right fielder, Will Benson. They hope he's the guy to spark a comeback. He tends to play better when his team is behind, so why not him? One down, base is empty. Fastball for a strike. He fouls it off. We'll do it again. Left-hand hitter waits. Spoils that one, and it remains two and two. And the righty deals. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. And they're down to their last out. So the bullpen doing a nice job backing up the effort from their starter. Yeah, we've seen some pretty excellent pitching out of this staff so far. I mean, they've come in ready to do their job and get outs. They've been pretty tough to get to in this one. Reds down to their final out. Now here's the Reds leadoff man, Jonathan India. One strike away. Ground ball up the middle. Oh, he gloves it. Save. Fantastic effort, but that extends the inning. Wow, he did everything he could on that play with the throw from his knee, but the hustle down the line was enough to earn him the infield knock, and that's a great baseball play all the way around. In now for the Reds, Ellie De La Cruz. Kicks and deals. And another ball. Typically, the outfield defense will play a little bit deeper just to keep the ball in front, make sure that runner on first doesn't come all the way around to score and tie this ball game up. A one-run lead here in the last half of inning number nine. They're down to their final strike. Great RBI spot here. Just got to stay focused on the pitch. The runner will be in motion, so something in the gap should definitely score it. Swing and a foul ball at the plate. They'll do it again. Ball four. He walked in, and that keeps things going. Walks out of the bullpen can absolutely kill your momentum very quickly. They're in some hot water trying to protect this lead. Bottom of the ninth, one run game, two on. And now here is Tyler Stevenson. Oh, how he'd love to walk it off right here. So the tying run at second comes up empty. That's strike two. One ball, two strikes. Hard hit, right side. Throw to first, ball game. And the Brewers strand the go-ahead run to hold on for the win. Well, this one was all about the pitching and defense. Outstanding job of the pitchers, really attacking hitters, trusting what the catcher was putting down, and trusting the players standing behind them to make the plays defensively. Sometimes you want to see a high-scoring game, but sometimes you can appreciate the artistic beauty of what these pitchers did on the mound today. And a 1-0 final score here in this one. For Chris Singleton and our entire crew, I'm John Chomby saying so long.